All right, so this is um, a lesson that you're going to have a lot in Algebra 3-4, please. It's not. So this is from Section 5-7 in Algebra 3-4. <coughs> We're going to look at rational exponents. She's absent today. Shocking. Thank you. <laughs> Shocking. <coughs> All right. No. <laughs> she could be, but I'll bet you she's leaving. If I were her, that's what I'd be doing. Okay. Rational exponents. Rational exponents. Rational exponents. Just about it. All right. Just kidding. All right. We're going to put the following into... Um, radical form. So this is, um, <coughs> we're going to be working with fractional exponents. Fractional exponents actually mean that we're taking roots of the base. So if we look at question A, I've got A to the one fourth. So remember that this whole thing is a power. This whole entire thing is a power. A is your base. One fourth is your exponent. <coughs> Anytime you have a fractional exponent, um, two things are going on. The numerator of that fractional exponent is the, the power that we're raising the base to. So <coughs> that means I'm taking A to the first power. So this is what the base. In this case, A is raised to. So if it were a 3, a to the 3 fourths, I would have a to the third, and then we'll talk about what that denominator is. That denominator, in this case 4, means the root. So we have lots of roots now. We have, you, you're most familiar with square roots and cube roots. We could have fourth roots, fifth roots, sixth roots, seventh roots, eighth roots, ninth roots, whatever. I could go into anything. <coughs> so because this is a four, it means I'm taking the fourth root of A. So A to the first, and I'm taking the fourth root of that. So if we were to write this in radical form, it would be written as, here's your root, there's the four. But if it's anything other than a square root, you're going to put that root here. So the denominator goes here. And then the base A goes underneath that radical, and it's technically raised to the first. We don't write A to the first, though, do we? So that's A to the one-fourth in radical form. So if I were to take it out of radical form and put it into exponential form, because this is exponential form, take your base, whatever it's raised to underneath that root, that's what goes as the numerator to the fraction, and then whatever the root is goes as the denominator. <coughs> So you try this one on your own. We've got x to the 1 fifth. Actually, let's make it x to the 3 fifths for chocolate sake. So what's your answer? You know how to read that answer? Well, let's look at it. Is that your answer? Here's how we read it. You always read the root first. So I have the fifth root of x to the third. So the numerator of the fractional exponent is what my base x is raised to. And then that denominator is the root that I'm taking. OK? Um, so then example two. This time, you're going to go backwards. You're going to put into rational exponent form. So example A. This time, we have the Q root of Y. 
So if I want to put it into rational exponent form, my base underneath the root is a y. So that's the base of my um, exponential form. And then what's y raised to? What power? The first power, so y is raised to the first power, so the numerator of my exponent is 1, and what's the root? 3. So this is really y to the 1 third. So you try this on your own. The eighth root of c cubed. The eighth root of c cubed. So share your answer with those around you, see if they agree with you. What'd you get? What's your, uh, what's your base? C, what's C raised to? The third, what's the root? Eight, so C to the three eighths. So we totally clear on how to go into radical form and out of radical form. Does that make sense? Okay, now we're gonna simplify things that have fractional exponents. So for instance, example three. You are to simplify, bless you. So, question A. We've got 16 to the negative one-fourth. So there are actually two ways that we can simplify this, and you need to decide what way works best for you, because I, I really don't care which way you do it. So, way one, bless you. So, way one, you can deal with the fact that we now have a negative Exponent. Remember what we do to take care of the fact that it's a negative exponent, because this does not mean that the value of this power is negative. My answer to this is definitely not negative. So what do I do to get rid of that negative? Remember, say it really loudly because I have that error going over my head. Reciprocal, is that what you just said? <laughs> if I put that over 1, and I flip it, I can take care of that negative. So in other words, if I have a negative exponent, just put it in the opposite direction. So if it's in the numerator, put it in the denominator. If it's in the denominator, put it in the numerator, and the sign of that exponent changes. So I end up with 1 over 16 to the positive 1 fourth. Then I can take that out of exponential form and put it into radical form. So just take that 16 to the 1 fourth and put it into radical form. What would that look like? What root? The fourth root, right? And then 16 is raised to what exponent? The first, right? So the fourth root is 16. And if I factor out 16, what do I get? I get four twos. And here's what I want you to start to do. I want you to start to write your prime factoring in exponential form. So I get 1 over uh, the fourth root <coughs> of 2 to the fourth, because 16 is made up of four twos. Do you remember when we had exponents raised to, or um, variables raised to an exponent? How do we <coughs> take the square root of variables raised to an exponent? Like if this were x to the fourth, how would you take the square root of, the, or the fourth root of that? divide that exponent by 4, right? The same thing happens in any base with an exponent. So if I wanted to find the fourth root of this, I'm really looking for groups of 4. And this 16, if it's 4 twos, isn't it one whole group of 4? So how many twos come out in front of that root? Just one. Because I take one two from every group of 4 that I can have. I only have one group of 4. So isn't the 4 through to 16, 2? What times itself 4 times gives you 16? Isn't it 2? That's what that's asking. Or I can take <coughs> this and divide it by that root of 4, and don't I get 2 to the first? So my actual answer is 1 over 2, 1 half. So 16 to the negative 1 fourth is 1 half. 
And if I plug that into my handy dandy calculator just to prove to you that it's true. My calculator is probably going to give me a decimal. So if I plug in uh, 16 and raise that to the negative one fourth, is that the equivalent of one half? So it works. All right, so here's way two. So way two, I can go ahead and start off again with my 16 to the negative one fourth. So that's what I start off with. Instead of taking care of the negative exponent, I can just look at just the base itself and convert that base to its prime exponential form. So didn't we already factor 16 into four twos earlier? Wouldn't you agree that I can replace 16 here with 2 to the 4th? Would you agree that those are the same? And then that 2 to the 4th is actually raised to the negative 1 4th. Isn't this a power to a power? What do we do with exponents when it's a power to a power? Do we add, subtract, multiply, divide? Multiply. So power to power, I'm going to take four and multiply it by negative one fourth. What do I get? Four times negative one fourth. Don't I get negative one? Positive times a negative is a negative. Four times one fourth, this would be four over one, wouldn't it? The fours would cancel, you get a one. Oh, I can't write things with a negative exponent. So again, how do I take care of that negative exponent? Take the reciprocal. Aren't these the same? I personally like way two, but then again, I do a lot of, I teach a lot of pre-calc, and we do a lot of this in pre-calc. You're not quite used to looking at things in exponential form yet, but you'll have to do a lot of that next year. Lots. So you might want to try to work your way to way two rather than way one. It tends to be easier. All right, so try this one on your own. Let's see what you can get. So B, you can use whichever method you like, 243 raised to the 3 fifth. <clears throat> now if I were you, personally, I would prime factor that. Try it with way 2. Prime factor 243. Use your divisibility rules. What's the biggest number that goes in there? Using your divisibility rules. 1, 3, 10. Which one? Why nine? Yeah, two plus four is six, plus three is nine. Doesn't that mean that nine divides into there? That's a pretty big number. So if I were you, I'd start with that. Behold, don't you have a whole bunch of threes? How many threes are there? So I would replace only the 243 <coughs> and replace that with 3 to the fifth. Because I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 threes. And that's raised to the 3 fifths. All you have to do is power to power. So off to the side, if, if fractions are a problem for you, wouldn't I have 5 as 5 over 1 times 3 fifths? What happens? The 5's cancel, and you end up with 3 to the what? 3 to the 3rd, which is what? 27. So written in um, radical form, by the way, you would have had 243. raised to the third power, and you, bless you, you'd be taking the fifth root. You still have to prime factor this inside here, right? You still have to prime factor this inside here, but bear in mind that that whole thing is raised to the third power. So 
you would have, and so I find this a little harder, you would have to do um, two, 3 to the 5th, which is raised to the 3rd, right? And then doesn't that become the 5th root of 5 times 3 is 15, 3 to the 15th, and now you can go and divide by 5. So you get, um, that ends up being 3 to the 3rd out in front, because 5 divides in there evenly three times with no remainders. So that means you actually took the fifth root, and then you would multiply that out, it'd be 27. Do I get the same answer? This is way two. I'm sorry, this is way one that I showed you. This is way two. Which do you like better? I like way two. If you can get used to doing way two, I think way two is a lot less complicated. Get used to doing a power to power. All right, let's look at example four. Simplify. So we've got x to the one fifth times x to the seven fifths equals. We have like bases, right? When you're multiplying <coughs> like bases, what do you do with the exponents? You add, subtract, multiply, or divide. You add. If you forget, then take away the denominator. You've got <coughs> x to the first times x to the seventh. You should add those. You get x to the eighth, right? So don't let the fractions impede your brain on what you already know your exponent operations to be. So we're going to take x to the one-fifth and add the seven-fifths to that. Aren't the denominators the same? If the denominators and your fractions are not the same, then you do have to find the least common denominator. So fortunately for you, they are. And we end up with x to the eight-fifths. I'm happy with that answer unless they said to write it in radical form. If I were you, I'd leave this as an answer. Never, ever, ever write an exponent with a mixed number answer or an exponent with a decimal. Don't do it. If you were to write that in radical form, write down what you think it would look like, just in case. What would that look like in radical form? What root am I taking of x? The fifth root. And what's x raised to? The eighth. Is this fully simplified, by the way? If you were to simplify it, it's not fully simplified, because can't I divide 8 by 5, and 5 goes in there partially? How many times does 5 go into 8 wholly? Once. So if that were to be simplified, I'd have 1x out in front. And how many x's are remaining? 8 minus 5 is 3. So wouldn't I have the fifth root of x to the third? So that would be fully simplified radical form. Unsimplified radical form, fully simplified radical form. Example five. Simplify again. We've got y to the negative 3 fourths. I'm going to walk you through this one, and I'm going to explain to you why it's currently not simplified. So if they say to simplify, and there's no other notations there, you're not going to write it in radical form, number one. Number two, what's currently wrong with it? It's got a negative exponent. We don't write things with a negative exponent. So um, the first thing that I would do is take its reciprocal. So it's currently over 1, right? So the reciprocal would be 1 over y to the positive 3 fourths. Well, technically, if I have a um, base with a fractional exponent, don't I have a radical in the denominator? Isn't this really the fourth root of y cubed? Are we allowed to have radicals in the denominator? No. So I have to rationalize 
the denominator. We'll have to get rid of any radicals that might be there. Um, essentially, I want to make y to the first power in the denominator. So when we rationalized before, we multiplied by whatever radical that we had, the same radical. But in this case, we're not going to quite do that. I'm going to multiply this by a base form of y with an exponent. If I want 1 as my final an answer, what am I going to multiply, knowing that when I multiply like bases, I add exponents? So what do I have to add the 3 fourths to get a 1? So if I multiply this by y to the 1 fourth, because 3 fourths plus 1 fourth gives me y to the first, whatever I do to the denominator, don't I have to do to the numerator? True. So I end up with y to the positive 1 fourth in the numerator. This gives me y to the first in the denominator. Now let's think about this. I know you're not used to seeing a y in the numerator and y in the denominator, and you want to combine them. And when we divide like bases, what do we do to the exponents? Subtract. So this is 1. What's 1 fourth minus 1? 1 fourth minus 4 fourths. Don't we get back to what we originally started with? So if you try to do that, you're going to get back to where you originally started with. Do you see why we can't do that anymore? So uncomfortable though it may be, that is your fully simplified form. All right, last set of examples. So <coughs> example six. Again, we will simplify. This time we have the eighth root of 81 divided by the sixth root of 3. Is 81 made up of 3's, by the way? Yeah. So the very first thing I would do, and this is why I want to force you to go to way 2, I would take this out of exponential form and put it into, um, or take it out of radical form and put it into exponential form. So start there. What is this in exponential form? What's your base? What's your base? 81. What's 81 raised to? The first power. And what's its root? 8. Don't you agree that that's 81 to the 1 8? All divided by, what's the base here? The base is 3. Isn't the base 3? What's 3 raised to? The the 1 and its root is 6, so 3 to the 1 sixth. We all agree with that. This is a prime base. Is this a prime base? No. So let's break 81 into its prime numbers. 81 gives me 9 times 9, and then each of those 9s give me a 3, right? So what can I replace 81 with? 3 to the 4th. 81 is getting replaced with 3 to the 4th, but it's still raised to the 1 8th, isn't it? All I did was replace 81 with 3 to the 4th. Over, this is now 3 to the 1 6th. I'm trying to get to like bases because when I have like bases, what do I do with exponents? When I have like bases and I'm dividing, what do I do with exponents? I subtract. So I'm getting there. So now I've got a power to a power. This is 4 over 1, right? Doesn't the 4 cancel with the 8? 4 cancels with the 8 twice, so what do I actually have for an exponent? 3 to the 1 half, so I've got 1 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator, over 3 to the 1 sixth. Now I have fully simplified numerator, fully simplified denominator. I have like basis. Don't I subtract the exponents? And where do I have more? Which is bigger, half of a pi or a sixth of a pi? Half of a pi. So I'm going to subtract in the numerator. So all of this is going to subtract from here. But the problem is, so drop down here. The problem is I now have 3 to the 1 half minus 1 sixth. Because there's a 1 in my denominator. Can I subtract those the way they are? 
where your fraction knowledge comes into play. What's the least common denominator? Six. So what does two need to be multiplied to become six? Three. So I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by three. So now I have three to the three-sixths minus one-sixth. So I get three to the what? Two-sixths, which is what? Three to the one-third. Isn't that really, really the Q root of three? So long as I don't have a, a radical or a, an, a base with a fractional exponent and a denominator, I'm good. So there's my answer to that one. Let's look at a different scenario. B. This time you have the fourth root of 9z squared. So now I have a number and a variable. If I were to take this variable raised to an exponent and divide it by 4, can I take the fourth root of z squared? Does 4 divide into 2 evenly? No. But we're going to get as simplified as possible. What can I do to 9? I can prime factor it, right? What's its prime factor form? So 9 becomes 3 squared times z squared. And any time I have a base raised to an exponent, can't I divide each of these exponents by 4? This gets divided by 4. That gets divided by 4. I'm taking the fourth root, even though I can't do it completely. Don't I end up with 3 to the 1 half times z to the 1 half? What's 3 to the 1 half really mean? What root am I taking of 3? The square root. And what root am I really taking of z? The square root. Can't I put them both under a square root? So convert this back into radical form. They're both underneath the square root. And isn't it 3 times z? This is fully simplified. The fourth root of 9z squared is really the square root of 3z. Weird but true. All I did was <coughs> convert them to exponential form and use our previous knowledge knowing that when we take the root of something with an exponent, we divide those exponents by that root. I looked at their exponential form. So once I do that, I can take the root away because I basically converted these into their exponential form and I reduced it and then converted it back into radical. So you'll practice that today. And then the last one. Here we have m to the 1 half minus 1 divided by m to the 1 half plus 1. This is no different than having the square root of m minus 1 over the square root of m plus 1. Don't I have a square root in the denominator? Can I have a square root in the denominator? No. Remember how we talked about conjugates to get rid of the square roots? If this is the square root of m plus 1, what's its conjugate? The square root of m minus 1, right? So I'm not going to use the square root of m. I'm going to use m to the 1 half because it's the same thing. So the conjugate of this would be m to the 1 half. Instead of a plus, it would be a minus 1. And I'm going to do that to the numerator as well. So we are going to distribute. So I'm going to take this times this. When I multiply like bases, what do I do with the exponents? What do I do with the 1 half? Multiply like bases, what do you do with the exponents? Add. What's 1 half plus 1 half? 1. So don't I get m to the first? And then I have minus m to the 1 half, right? I go from here to here. Then I have to distribute the inside from here to here. Do I get another minus m to the 1 half? I get two of those. And then I have to distribute from here to here. Negative 1 times negative 1, positive 1. All divided by. Technically, isn't this a squared minus b squared? Right? What did we say m to the 1 half times itself was? Just m 
minus what's uh, one squared? One. And if you want to foil it, you're welcome to. Here's our m to the first. This is a negative m to the one half. This is a positive m to the one half. They cancel each other out. And then finally, this is your negative one. So then we have to deal with the numerator. I have an m. And then a negative m to the one half and a negative m to the one half. These are the same bases raised to the same exponents. It'd be no different than saying minus m and minus m. What's a minus m and a minus m? Negative 2m, right? So this is no different, but it's negative 2m to the one half. That variable string doesn't change when you collect like terms. So the one half doesn't change. I just have a negative one and a negative one gives me that negative two m to the one half plus one over m minus one. You don't know how to factor that. That's fully factored. This is your answer. Uncomfortable, but true. So you're going to practice getting used to using a conjugate with a fractional exponent. Um, so I do expect that you're working on your homework in class so you can ask questions and seek help.